Ureters are slender tubes that convey urine from the kidney to the bladder. And anatomically, they begin at L2, and they are the continuation of the renal pelvis of the kidney. They're located posteriorly, so retroperitoneally, and they're um, located, they contain three different layers of the ureter wall. So from the inside to the outside, they first have the mucosa, which is transitional epithelium, the muscularis, it's smooth muscle, sheets that contract in response to stretching, and they propel urine into the bladder, and they peristalsis occurs in this region, and it adjusts to the rate of urine formation. But there's constantly urine that's being formed going from the ureters into the bladder. And this muscle is innervated by both fight, both fight or flight and the rest and digest nervous system. However, this really doesn't, isn't that important, but it does play a bit of a role. And then finally, the outermost wall is called the adventitia, outer fibrous connective tissue. The urinary bladder is a muscular sac, which uh, functions for temporary storage of urine. It's also located in a retroperitoneal region. In males, it runs, it's, um, the prostate is inferior to the bladder neck. But in females, it's located anteriorly to the vagina and to the uterus. There is openings for the ureters and the urethra. And located in this region um, is called the trigone. It's a smooth triangular region. And the openings for the ureters are, there's two openings. So two ureteral openings and one opening for the urethra. The lining of the bladder wall is similar to the ureter in that there are three layers. There's also the, all as well, the mucosa, the muscular layer with, with a thick detrusor muscle, which specifically has three layers of smooth muscle. And then also the outermost fibrous adventitia. So the urinary bladder has a storage capacity of about 500 milliliters, so half a liter, which is about one pint. And there are rugae that appear. This is uh, this, the same thing basically that was found in the stomach. These are finger-like extensions, which help to increase the surface area when fully stretched. So leading from the urinary bladder to the exterior is the tube called the urethra. It's lined with epithelium, which is mostly pseudostratified columnar epithelium, except for the transitional epithelium near the bladder. So the bladder is transitional epithelium and continuing outside of that to the urethra is still transitional epithelium. And then close to the exterior is stratified squamous epithelium. Now, the urethra has two different muscular controls called sphincters. And these two sphincters are, um, there's one that's involuntary and there's one that's voluntary. The internal one is called the internal urethral sphincter and it has involuntary control. So it's automatically controlled and it contracts to open. However, the external one is voluntary in that we consciously have to control it. So in the female urethra, it is more tightly bound to the front of the vaginal wall and the external urethral orifice is anterior to the vaginal opening. So the structure of the urinary bladder and urethra is shown on this slide. However, it's specifically in the male urethra and the male urethra has a dual role. It carries both semen and urine as well. 
So the three different regions of the male urethra are the prostatic urethra, the region that runs through the prostate, the intermediate part of the urethra, also called the membranous urethra, and it's a very short region. And then finally, the spongy urethra, which passes through the penis and then opens via the external urethra sphincter. So as we look a little more closely, we can see those. So here's the ureter, and the openings to the ureter are at the trigone of the bladder, and there's two of them coming from each kidney. Then we see the opening for the urethra, leading into the prostatic urethra, then the intermediate part of the urethra, a small part, small region. And then finally, the spongy urethra going through the penis, located by the erectile tissue of the penis, which you'll learn more about in the reproductive system. So our next slide is showing us the structure of the urinary bladder. And we've We've talked about a, a few of these things now. We've talked about the rugae, the detrusor muscle, which is a composition of three layers of smooth muscle, the ureteric orifices, orifices. So these are the openings for the two ureters leading from the kidney into the bladder. Then the internal urethral sphincter, which is involuntary, and the external urethral sphincter, which is voluntary. This slide is showing the various homeostatic imbalances associated with the urinary system. And um, one of the most common ones is UTIs, which stands for urinary tract infection. And unfortunately, it is uh, more common in females, and that's primarily because of the short urethra of females, and it can allow fecal bacteria to easily enter urethra, enter into the urethra. So the most UTIs occur in sexually active women. There's also uh, urethritis, inflammation of the urethra, cystitis, inflammation of the bladder, Pilatus or pyelonephritis. Nephro um, has to do with the kidney. Remember the nephron. And the treatment for a lot of these would be antibiotics. Micturition is the term for urination. And reflexive urination is the urination that occurs in infants. However, as children become potty trained, they're able to control their external urethral sphincter. So in the case of reflexive urination, this causes excitation of parasympathetic neurons in the reflex center of the sacral region of the spinal cord. This is going to lead to contraction of the detrusor muscle and opening of the internal sphincter which remember is the involuntary sphincter. So this leads to urination. And at this point, the, ch the infants are unable to control their external urethral sphincter. But once they are potty trained, then they're able to control their external urethral sphincter. So the control of micturation is shown on this slide. So we can see the uh, various steps that are involved. And notice that when the detrusor contracts, this leads to the opening of the internal urethral sphincter. And when the external urethral sphincter opens, this is due to somatic motor nerve activity, so conscious nerve activity. And you can see that the controls occur via the brainstem, and also there's control from higher brain centers. So the cerebral cortex deciding whether or not to urinate at that moment.